Welcome! If you're new to this channel, please remember to share this video if it's very helpful to you, like it. Let's dive in. Recently in the news, there's been a story of an alleged rape incident that went viral. And the incident reportedly took place in Atlanta, Georgia. It, it occurred reportedly at a nightclub and actually on the dance floor of that nightclub. Allegedly, uh, a lady by the name of Jasmine Eland was the victim of this assault, sexual assault. And the entire time that the assault was happening, according to the viral videos, a lot of the assault was captured on, on some uh, live video that the victim was recording. The victim had a phone in the hand. It was reported that it was her birthday. She's from another northern state. I can't remember exactly. But she had traveled to Atlanta to um, enjoy her birthday. And I had, there's also reported that there was a celebrity that was going to be there, that she was excited to be there. And um, so she was recording her birthday. She was enjoying herself. She was, you know, recording on live. And there happened to be a guy who had this very piqued interest in this young lady. And he, you know, stuck with her throughout the entire videos that she was recording of herself enjoying her, her time in the club and on her birthday. And he, you know, was always in the video. Every time you look around, he was there. And then other patrons of the club were recording as well on their phones. Uh, there was a part of the video where it was suspected that there was a drug placed in her drink, like a white pill. Um, you guys could go and check out some of the links of the video where some people have highlighted like a white spot in her drink while she was dancing. And it was suspected that the guy may have put it there, but there's, you know, no evidence or proof that he did it. But the alleged assaulter also had an interview where he actually placed himself on the interview with the victim throughout the night. It's also been reported uh, that his lawyer had asked him to uh, not post the, the interview or remove the interview from social media somehow or because it may have been incriminating, but I don't know what happened further with that situation. On the viral video, you're able to hear her, you know, say no, stop screaming in, in what seems like discomfort or extreme discomfort in the video and there's other things that goes on in the video that were extremely inappropriate even though the video doesn't show every detail she was able to hold the phone up or control the phone in her hand because and record live continue recording her assault live because the on the back of her phone there's like a hook or a ring or something like that so she can keep her finger in the ring and it won't fall and that's probably how she was able to keep her phone with her and protect her phone. Uh, in the video, she apparently was either extremely inebriated or drugged in some way at the point of being catatonic. So it seems like, you know, she was out of it, either unconscious at points in the video and so forth. So you can check it out yourself and, you know, make your own observations. There are, there are hundreds of videos that you can find from different angles and different perspectives online. Now, the reason I brought this situation forth is because narcissists, sociopaths, scammers, con artists, psychopaths, for two reasons. Um, one reason is because this one other victim, she had alleged that she was raped by this person as well. This could be a potential serial rapist you know, who goes around and doesn't leave evidence because one of the women said, you know, he used protection. That's how he's perhaps able to get away with these alleged rapes. And that's the thing about cluster B personality types or persons of the dark triad types. They're very impulsive. You know, they take advantage of persons that uh, appear to be vulnerable, weak, naive, gullible in some way. It was also reported that she had um, traveled to Atlanta alone to enjoy her birthday. I don't know if she had a friend or with her at all times, or she was at, you know, alone most of the time. But of course he went publicly um, 
on a, in an interview and denied the whole thing and blamed it on the victim, completely gaslit her. And then another person who reported the situation also was blamed by this alleged rapist and was also gaslit completely by this alleged rapist. When it comes to such situations, you would see people come out of the woodwork. People come out of the woodwork who are either defending the alleged rapist, which has been happening in this case by hundreds of thousands of people, people who have been shaming and blaming the alleged victim, uh, denying her reports, etc. And that's one thing I wanted to talk about, just being careful of, you know, certain people who are what I would consider rape apologists or people who defend situations that are apparently an assault or, or harm that was caused intentionally. You know, there are a lot of people who would go around doing that, finding, finding uh, fault with targets or victims, whereas um, they completely defend or find ways to exonerate the alleged assaulter. So that brings me to this topic of schadenfreude. This term schadenfreude is a German term. The schaden in, this, in the term stands for to hurt or damage, and then Freude uh, means to find joy or joy. So schadenfreude, according to psychologists, describes someone who finds joy in the pain or the, or the hurt or the damage of someone. And some of the main points about this, about this condition is that you know, it's very evil because, you know, there's some, there's some factors that have to be in place. Like for instance, schadenfreude, the person has to be privy to something bad happening to someone that they didn't cause themselves. Whereas if the person themselves caused the harm, that would be considered sadistic. You causing pain, harm, destruction, damage to something directly. Whereas schadenfreude would be you witnessing or being privy to or hearing about pain happening to someone or damage happening to someone or their property or the, or something related to someone else from a third party or done being done by a third party to the person. And this brings me back to narcissists because they get this very sick pleasure from someone suffering you know, from someone, someone losing their joy, losing their peace of mind, losing their contentment. And the reason is because narcissists, you know, they have this strong, overwhelming envy for anyone doing better than themselves. They even hate people who are not doing better than themselves because envy is directly can, related to or connected to hate. And that's how narcissists feel about the world, you know, about human society. They want to be the gods of society. They want to be on top. They enjoy seeing other people suffer. And if they can cause the suffering in a sadistic way, they would also do that as well. And yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, we would see videos where someone failed, someone tripped, someone spilled something on themselves or something, and you may laugh about it, or you may find it comical, or you may... But that's something different. Sometimes people laugh just out of sheer discomfort. Like you see something happen to someone and you don't know what to do. And you're like, you kind of chuckle because you're uncomfortable with the situation. Uh, you don't really know what to do. But it's not like, that's another factor I wanted to share about Shad and Friday. It's not like, you know, you're finding joy from someone breaking their pencil or finding joy from someone who broke a heel on their shoe or something like that. Schadenfreude, according to therapists online, is when the person is actually hurt in the situation. Like, let's say you broke a heel on your shoe, but then that causes you to fall and break your arm or something like that. Like, that's where they find the joy in that destructive pain and damage. Or let's say you slam your hand or finger in a door. Like that, if, you know, that type of pain... Or if someone, uh, if you get into a car accident, someone hits your car and somehow you suffer, you know, damage in that way. Or you get whiplash or something uh, something major happens. You know, narcissists, these dark triad types, they find extreme joy in that type of pain, that type of sadistic damage, even if it ends up in fatality. So even though the common person might laugh at 
you know, someone falling off their skateboard or something, but you would also feel empathy. You would also feel concerned that they're okay, you know, that they didn't hurt themselves severely, they didn't break anything. They may have gotten a scratch or something, but then you also feel sympathy for that even happening, and no matter how small it is. And you would hope and you're praying that, you know, nothing more severe happens. And if it does, you do feel true empathy for the individual, whereas narcissists don't feel empathy for their individual. You know, their joy doesn't just stop with the individual falling or tripping or spilling something. It goes further, needing a cast or being on crutches or, or even worse. So that's another factor of the schadenfreude. You know, there are people who see this, this alleged rape victim and they find joy in the fact that, oh, it was recorded live and she was unconscious. She was completely out of control in the situation because narcissists thrive and they breathe in power and control. That's what they breathe in and out. That's what this person in this video was completely taking advantage of this alleged victim. He was in control. He felt powerful. She was unconscious at points of the video. And the lady is a very small lady. If you see other photos and videos of her, she's very, very petite compared to this man who looks like he's about six feet or more. And, you know, very tall, big guy. He's also reportedly a security guard or a bouncer. There's no reports if he was a bouncer at that particular club that night, but he's from reportedly from that area and is a bouncer or a security guard or someone who, you know, brings order or control. So he's a very strong person, someone who could obviously overpower a very petite, tiny uh, young woman. You know, there are so many different angles to it. You know, people who defend criminals, people who defend just bad behavior in general, people who defend uh, narcissists, etc. And then with narcissists, if you if they hear something bad happen to someone, they'd have this smirk, you know, this like slight um, glimmer of glee on their face when something bad happens to somebody. And if you look at them for that second, you're telling them a story, you will kind of see this thing in their eye, the twinkle in their eye or something about their face doesn't seem concerned right away. They seem like they kind of smile a little bit or something about their face seems to light up just for that instant, and then they would try to, like, get it back in check. They try to control it. They try to, you know, show appropriate social reactions. They study human emotion, and, and this is a reason why narcissists would um, try to stay in contact with you, or why narcissists, you know, stalk you sometimes, or seem to spy on you at times, because they know that they've left you hurt, perhaps heartbroken, or in a damaged place, on a more vulnerable place than they may have met you initially. And they they want to come back and check to see if you're still suffering, if you're worse off than they left you, like what's going on with you. They're hoping and their thoughts are that you are worse off than they left you, that they are doing better than you just to keep their ego propped up and to boost their ego. That's what they're hoping for. You know, they go and hoover you back in to see, you know, if you still need them, or if you do need them, you know, this is why it's important to, you know, do your best to get the assistance and help you need to build yourself up, particularly after you realize that you've been in a narcissistically abusive situation because, you know, this brings joy to the narcissist. It makes them continue to hoover you, spy on you just so that they can find out if there's a crack or some fracture in your life or your circumstances that they can creep back in, you know, slide back in or somehow get back into your life due to your vulnerabilities, particularly after they've pulled the rug right from under you. So this is one of the reasons why they discard you in your times of need and you know, what's going on in people's lives just so that they can find something to make them happy. And you have to be careful because this can happen with anyone in your life. It can be your sister, your mom, it can be a co-worker, your boss, you know, you just don't know who is in your life, including romantic partners who 
you know, are pretending to be interested in your well-being, want to check on you, are concerned about your misfortunes and concerned about your life because you don't know if they're actually deriving joy from your pain. You know, it's good to build, build yourself up financially, spiritually, stay healthy, stay physically attuned, keeping your cognitive faculties alert and stable and doing things that you enjoy that helps all of these areas of your life in order that you don't attract these type of people in your life who are looking for people who are unhappy, discontented, and going through misfortunes or vulnerable. This is a way to distract such entities. Narcissists are very adverse to criticism. They hate it. It knocks on the door of their true self, which they're not going to let anyone enter into that space. This is why, you know, they, they study human and social interactions and emotions so they could appear to be normal and fit into general society, whereas they shouldn't even be a part of general society at whatsoever. They should be actually, in my opinion, out somewhere on an island all by themselves, if not worse. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thanks for being here and allow me to do that. Please browse the description box below. Till my next video, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.